It's always nice in Minecraft to have adorable pet mobs, like dogs, cats, or parrots, but Minecraft has a ton more tameable and semi-tameable mobs than that, so I'll show you how to get them all in this pet guide. We're going to start off with the main pet types, and the first one of those is the cat. What you want to do is go to a village. Villages can have stray cats spawn at them, so the best idea is once you've got some fish from fishing or from punching some fish mobs, you want to go to where those cats are and get fairly close, then crouch and slowly walk towards them with either a raw cod or a raw salmon in your hand. What will eventually happen is those cats will stop going away from you and they'll slowly walk towards you, but sometimes they'll get nervous and they'll run back. And so because of this, the best idea is to sort of chase them up to a certain extent, then once you're fairly close, then to hold out that fish. And with this cat going forward right here, we're just going to right click on it, and that time we were lucky, it only took one fish to tame it. Sometimes it takes more, but you want to just simply right click on that. Now if you're chasing the cat and you try and right click on it, it doesn't really work. You can still do this if you want, but it doesn't work anywhere near as well. The best idea is just to let that cat walk towards you. A great way of customizing your pet is to dye its collar a different color. So for instance, right here we can right click on this cat with that yellow dye, and it now has a yellow collar. There are 11 different variants of cats in Minecraft, and we're going to go through them all. The first one is the black cat, which is this one right here. It has these sort of orangish eyes. Next we have the British Shorthair. This is the grey cat over here. Then there's the calico cat, which is this one right here. Then right over here we have the jelly cat. Now the jelly cat is based off of the YouTuber Good Times with Scars cat. This is because there was a competition of adding one more cat texture into the game, and that was the texture that won. There's then the Persian cat, this one has blue eyes. We have the ragdoll cat, this one's kind of white looking. We then have the red cat, then there is the Siamese cat, which of course does look like the actual Siamese cat breed. There is the tabby cat, the tabby cat here has yellow eyes. There's also the tuxedo cat, this one is fully black, but it also has some white on it. And finally, we have the white cat, and that is every single cat variety. Also, one other thing important to know is that if you right click on two cats with fish, and they enter into breeding mode, they will breed, giving you a baby cat. And there's also an achievement where if you tame every single cat in the game, you have the complete cat log achievement there. But either way, cats have two main uses. When it gets to nighttime, if your cats are sitting up, so this will not work if they're sitting down, and you go to sleep and they're around, well not only are they actually going to try and sleep on the bed with you, which is quite funny, but as well as that, in the morning there's something really interesting that'll happen, is that for every cat that was sitting up during the night, there's a chance that they'll have sort of gone out during the night to hunt for you. So we got a rabbit hide, raw chicken, and two feathers. But the way it actually works is that if they give you a treasure, there's a 16% chance of a rabbit's foot, a rabbit's hide, a string, rotten flesh, a feather, or a raw chicken. And then there is a much smaller 3.22% chance, or a 1 in 31 chance, of them giving you a phantom membrane. And this means that if you have tons of cats set up, this is actually the best way of farming phantom membranes in the game, but I would say is definitely a more main use of the cat, is its ability to scare off mobs. And there's two types of mobs it scares away. The first one is the phantom. So if you have cats near you, this phantom cannot get further away from you. And of course the reason for this is that because the cats sometimes give us phantom membranes at night, the idea would be that they're actually hunting those phantoms. And the other mob that these cats can scare away for us is the creeper. You'll notice with this creeper right here, although it will still explode if it gets close to us, once it notices even one cat, it'll just run right the other way, just like you can see here. But on from the cat to the next pet. That next pet is the parrot. Parrots are not the most useful pets, but they're also a very difficult mob to find, and so because of that, that makes them actually fairly valuable. And simply right click on the parrot with whatever seed variety you have on you, and every time you right click on it there's a chance it'll get tamed. And so we'll keep right clicking on there. You'll notice there's also smoke particles when a tame is ineffective, but after a whole bunch of seeds, and this is definitely a very greedy parrot, eventually the parrot will tame to us, and you can see there's those heart particles to show. Now once a parrot is tamed to you, you can right click on it to make it sit up or sit down, and this is the same as the cat, or if it's sat up then it'll of course follow you, and if it's sat down then it will not move at all. But the additional benefit of the parrot is that if you walk over it, it'll go on 
onto your shoulder. Now there is one useful ability of the parrot, and that is that it mimics things. It doesn't actually mimic the player, because of course the player is silent, it doesn't make any sound, but what it can do is it can help alert you to nearby hostile mobs. And so for instance right here, we have creepers and witches that I've hidden underground. Let's listen to our parrots here and see if they make any witch sounds. In fact, you heard one right there, a creeper sound and a witch sound. We're not hearing the actual creepers and witches, but we are hearing those same sounds being mimicked by the parrots. So basically, they kind of give us a detection of those mobs. However, the only thing that is important to be aware of with the imitating sounds of the parrots is that very rarely the parrots will make a sound of a mob that is actually nowhere near them. So it has to be a repeated imitation for it to really mean anything. Anyway, let's take a look at these five parrot types here. We have this one, which is the red parrot, blue parrot, cyan parrot, green parrot, and gray parrot. And these are actually based off of real parrot varieties. So this one right here, which is red, yellow, and blue, is based off of the scarlet macaw. This blue parrot is based off of the hyacinth macaw. The green parrot is based off of the military macaw. This gray parrot is based off of the cinnamon cockatiel. And finally, this cyan parrot right here is based off of the blue and yellow macaw. Something important to know about parrots is that they cannot be bred. So if we right click on both these parrots with seeds, they're just not gonna enter love mode. But as well as that, if they unfortunately get hurt, you can also not feed seeds to them to heal them. So you'd have to use splash potions of healing if you wanted to heal your parrots. The original idea is that you could feed parrots cookies and that would breed them, but in reality parrots are allergic to cocoa, and so because of that inside the snapshot phases, they decided to make it so that cookies would not indeed be the taming food of parrots, but it would actually kill the parrots instantly. So it's pretty gruesome, but if you right click on a parrot with a cookie, it will consume the cookie and it will instantly kill the parrot. Now the one other unique functionality around parrots is around the jukebox. So if we place down a jukebox and play any music disc. For instance, we could play the chirp music disc, although it doesn't matter which one it actually is. All the nearby parrots will start dancing in this really funny way, where they kind of move their body in a circle around their legs. But anyway, that's basically everything about the parrot. So we're going to move on to the next main pet, and that is the wolf. Now they generate in groups of four with a 10% chance of any of them being a puppy. So for instance, right here we have a group of four with one puppy. And so the biomes you find them in are standard forests, taigas, also grove biomes, which are basically like a snowy taiga, old growth taigas, and of course actually snowy taigas, and so more or less any oak or taiga based forest. Now one difference between wolves and other pets is that wolves are actually a neutral mob. So if we were to punch these wolves, they would actually become aggressive towards us, and they are fairly dangerous as you can see. But anyway, if we actually want to tame this wolf and turn it into a pet, to tame them, you have to give them their favorite food, which is bones. If we right click a couple times, you can see they eventually do turn into being tamed. You'll notice the texture actually changes with the wolves here, with their eyes being more open and cute looking, but other than that, them looking about the same, also having a large collar. And of course, just like the cats, you can right click on this collar to make it any color you want. Now, once these wolves are tamed to you, a couple things change in their behavior. The first thing is they will actually not be naturally hostile towards things like sheep. So for instance, you can very safely have your sheep next to your wolves. However, if you let say punch any mob, this could even be another wolf or a sheep, your dogs will actually fight that mob for you. And so because we punched the sheep, for example, these wolves are now going after it. Or because that wolf attacked me, then they're gonna go after that as well. This is actually insanely useful and overlooked. As for instance right here, we have this skeleton that's being attacked by wolves, whereas skeletons are usually really difficult, these wolves make it easy. So even as you notice right there, that skeleton was actively running away from them. Now the funny thing is, is the favorite food of the wolf completely changes once they're tamed. It is no longer bones, it's changed to meat. And it can be basically any raw meat type in the game, but if you right click on both those wolves with it, and of course make sure they're sat up so they can get to each other, you you can then get puppies. And just like the kittens, these adorable puppies are also pre-tamed to you with the giant head and you can even see kind of on the edge there a bit of its collar. And so the idea would be is that if you breed these up a ton, you could actually make yourself a massive wolf army. So if something like a zombie let's say attacks you, then all your wolves are going to work together. Now if one of your wolves does get hurt, be careful and right click on it with meat. You'll notice their tails get a little bit lower, like even this wolf right here. If we right click on this wolf, its tail will likely go up. So this one wasn't actually hurt 
hurt, but if the wolf does get hurt, the tail goes down a bit, and that tail goes back up again, if we are gonna feed it the raw meat. Llamas, where do you find this unique mob inside of Minecraft? So llamas will generate in the Savannah Plateau in Java Edition, but no other Savannah Biome. However, inside of Bedrock Edition, as well as the Savannah Plateau, they can actually generate inside of any Savannah Biome. However, there is another place you can find these llama mobs in Minecraft, and that is the old Windswept Hills Biome, and this is basically the first mountain biome that was ever added to Minecraft, and it is the only other place you can find these llama mobs. However, of the llamas you'll find, they do come in four different colors, and those are brown, white cream as well as gray. To tame the llama you don't need to feed it food but you want to ride it. So right click on a llama and you'll basically get on it and it'll eventually buck you off. You just have to right click on it again and keep riding it until eventually those smoke particles are heart particles. You can customize a tamed llama into all different kinds of decorations by putting different colors of carpets on it. So for instance with the black carpet we have this interesting texture right here or with the blue carpet there's the yellow and blue on it and certain of the carpets like let's Say the green carpet actually have a pattern on them so for instance this one right here has the creeper face on it so of course we've now just decorated a random mob but how does that actually help us well you cannot just place chests on it to give it a load to move However, if you do take your chests and you right click on the llama, you'll notice there's that pop sound. What will happen is there'll be these chest textures on either side of the llama, and if you look at its inventory, it can have a carrying strength of anywhere from 3 to 15 slots. Well, let's say we have a bunch of items we want to move around. Just go to the llama's inventory and fill it up with some of those items. Then go to any other llamas you have with chests on them, and also put your stored items in that llama. You then want to attach one of the llamas to a lead, and all the llamas will Will start forming around each other to make a llama caravan. And this doesn't even matter if they're tamed or not, as long as one of the llamas is in the caravan, all the other llamas will basically form around it. It's pretty funny. So you can notice right here, we're going to lead around this llama and all the llamas behind it are going to move in a big train. However, one good question would be, how do you breed the llamas? Well, they have to both be tamed llamas, but if you right click on two tamed llamas with a hay bale, then those llamas will breed and you'll get a very adorable baby llama. But on to what I would call the semi-pet types, or basically the pet mobs in the game that are not fully tameable, but do have a lot of uses around them that basically make them be like pets. The first one of these is the Alley. The Alley was added in Minecraft 1.19 and can kind of be tamed. Basically the way it works is that you give them an item in their hand by right clicking on them with that item. As soon as you've done that, that Alley is then tamed to you as they'll roughly follow you around and if you place down an item on the ground of that type, then they will go and pick up those items on the ground and once they've picked them all up, they'll fly towards you trying to throw them at you. Now let's say they throw those items on the ground and you aren't able to pick them up in time like right here. They will simply pick those up again and then come towards you and try and give them. You can also find this mob inside of Woodland Mansion dungeons, which can sometimes contain tons and tons of allays inside of them. There's not really too much of a need for that, because as long as you have a single allay, you can get more of them. I'll show you how. You first need to head over to an amethyst geode and collect some of the fully grown amethyst crystals there to get yourself some amethyst shards. The next thing you need to do is place down a jukebox and play a music disc on it. Once you've done that, you'll notice that the allays are dancing around and doing little circles and things. Once they're in that state, simply right click on them with a amethyst shard and they will instantly duplicate like you saw right there. And of course there is a cooldown for this, but still because of that fact, you can turn some amethyst shards into infinite allays with just a bit of time and a jukebox. And of course allays themselves are useful for a bunch of things, like let's say you're farming trees and you don't want the saplings that fall on the ground to go to waste, simply have some allays nearby that'll pick up those saplings and put them into nearby chests. Next we have another fairly new mob and that is the axolotl. Axolotls are found inside of lush caves, so they will generate in these small clay block pools. Let's first talk about how many variants there are. There are five variants of axolotls. There is the yellow axolotl, pink axolotl, brown axolotl, sort of whitish axolotl. But then when breeding the axolotls, by right clicking on them with buckets of tropical fish, there is a very very small chance of getting a purplish blue axolotl. To kind of tame the axolotls, you pick them up in a bucket. Axolotls can be picked up in water buckets, whether they're babies or adults, so it's completely up to you with that what you do. And once they're all in buckets, here's how we can use them. Well, for starters, they will not despawn if they're in buckets, but what we can also do is actually use them to help us fight 
this ocean monument. So start by placing down all your axolotl buckets. Basically, the axolotls and the guardians are natural enemies, and so they'll try and fight each other, and those axolotls can be really helpful in having you defeat them. And sometimes this will give you a regeneration effect. So although they're not fully tameable, they're definitely still great mobs to have. Foxes will spawn inside of taiga biomes, as well as snowy taiga biomes in Minecraft. And these cute mobs are somewhat tameable. The first thing you want to do is harvest some berries. Then if you have those, if you breed two foxes, something you may notice, that baby fox will no longer run away from you. And as well as that, what's kind of interesting is that the adult foxes, if put on a lead, will also not run away from you. So for instance, this one right here is going to start running away from us, but if we put it on a lead, it'll then be somewhat tamed. Also by feeding them, it makes them trust you more. And same with the baby foxes. And so because of that, then this baby fox, although it does run around so much, it is not strictly afraid of us, and so that's how you can kind of tame foxes in the game. And one of the big uses of the fox, although it's not the friendliest use, is you can have them do different things for you inside of farms. So for example, they can pick berries or they can kill certain mobs. Ocelots in Minecraft have all but been forgotten. Basically, just like how you would tame the wolves to turn them into dogs, ocelots used to be tamed by right-clicking on them with cod or salmon, and that would make them turn into cats. But that is no longer how it works, and so now the ocelots are still in the game, but they're not the way of getting cats. So it is the point of these mobs. Basically, what you can do is you can still make them trust you. Although it doesn't do much, it's still kind of an interesting effect. So if you right-click on them with food, you can have them enter love mode and they'll breed. And the offspring of those two ocelots, although all ocelots are incredibly nervous, the adorable baby ocelots will not inherently distrust you. Hence, so you can have those as a sort of pet. Although they're not fully tamed, they do have that trust factor. And the nice thing about ocelots is although they can't be fully tamed, and they don't have all the benefits of cats, the creeper and the phantom mobs will still run away from them. Which is still pretty funny to me, having an incredibly dangerous hostile mob like a creeper be afraid. And for the final somewhat pet-like mob in Minecraft, we have the rabbit. Now though rabbits don't really function like a pet in Minecraft, this is an animal that a lot of people have as pets in real life, so I thought I would include it in this video. If you don't have anything in your hand that the rabbits like, they will run away from you, not at an incredibly fast rate, but they are definitely scared by the player. However, if you hold food in your hand, all that fear will suddenly disappear, and they will all start running towards you. And the foods they like are either carrots or golden carrots. You can actually breed the rabbits this way if you want, right-clicking on them with either the carrots or golden carrots. Of course, I would suggest carrots, as golden carrots are so much more expensive. And then we have the baby rabbits, so we can kind of tame them in that way, as long as we have their favorite food in our hand. But as well as that, the rabbits themselves are actually a fairly valuable mob, as they have three fully unique drops, that being the raw rabbit, rabbit hide, and the rabbit foot, which is the only way of getting the leaping potion. And inside the desert biome, these mobs are almost more than way too common. You find them all over the place, and so it's definitely a good way of farming the rabbit mobs, but also getting those different variants of them if you're not trying to farm them, but just have them as pets. I think the reason why there are so many rabbits inside of the desert is because they're the only passive mob that can generate here. And so because of that, they have that entire mob cap to themselves, whereas in things like, let's say, the plains biome or the meadow biome, Biome. Other mobs can spawn in there. The rabbits are just one of a very long list. But that is how you find rabbits inside Minecraft, and of course you can't even breed them. Feed them things like carrots to make them grow up faster, and sort of have them be tamed to you if you have their favorite food in your hand. Anyway, that is everything about pets in Minecraft. If you enjoyed this Minecraft pet guide, like the video, subscribe to see more content like this, and feel free to check out some of my other ultimate guides on the playlist at the end of this video. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!